talk to you about this. See, this is a prophetic conference. Part of the prophetic is releasing mantles. See, I want to talk about mantles tonight. Listen, do you know what a mantle is? Do you know what a mantle is? Come on, the Bible tells us in the book of 2 Kings, if you go to 2 Kings chapter 2, in verse 9, it says, and so it was when, here, I'll, I'll let you get there. Listen, this is the story of Elijah and Elisha and it's the story of how Elijah passed a double portion mantle to Elisha see there was one prophet Elijah who was used of God mightily in the kingdom he called down fire from heaven he rebuked the false prophets of Baal and he turned the whole nation back to God. Just like Miranda was talking about earlier. But here's what God wants to do. He doesn't just want one man to do all the work. He wants an entire generation to receive prophetic mantles so they can be effective in the kingdom of God. So I'm going to talk to you about spiritual mantles. What they are and how to position yourself to receive. And I'm going to use this story. See, 2 Kings chapter 2 tells us when it came to pass uh, that Elijah was to go up into heaven. It says that he went through three different cities. He walked through Gilgal. He walked through Jericho. He walked through Bethel. And then he crossed the river Jordan. On the other side. And as he was walking through the three cities. And he crossed over the river. Each city that he went into he stopped. To address the schools of the prophets that he had established. See, when he went to Gilgal, the prophets that were in Gilgal, they saw Elisha. And they said to him, Hey, why don't you stay here? Your master's going to be taken from you. And, and Elisha said, No. As long as the Lord lives and as long as my master is here, I'll follow him. They go to the next city. They go to Bethel. And when they get to Bethel, the prophets that are in that city, they tell Elisha, your master is going to be taken from you today. Stay here. He said, I rebuke you. He said, as long as the Lord lives and my master is here, I will follow him. The same thing happens in Gilgal. And then all of a sudden, as he's in Gilgal, the prophet Elijah, he even discouraged. He says, you should stay here. He said, no, I will not stay here. As long as the Lord lives and you live, I will follow you. So the Bible tells us that Elijah the prophet goes to the river takes his mantle off rolls it up strikes the ground and the river parts and him and Elijah walk across the river and they get to the other side of the river the river closes the 50 prophets on the other side from Gilgal were watching this happen and I want to just say this to you if you want a double portion mantle you got to have tenacity in your spirit you got to be unwilling to give up no matter what 
you got to see this because I want to read to you I want to show you what happens and I want you to see how he apprehends this mantle so look at this 2 Kings chapter 2 starting in verse 8 now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, struck the water, and when it was divided this way and that, so that two, the two of them crossed over on dry ground. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, ask what you may, do, that I may do for you uh, before I'm taken away from you. And Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them and Elijah went up in a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried out, My father, my father, and the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more and he took hold of his clothes and he tore them in two pieces. And he also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood at the bank of the Jordan. And he took the mantle that had fallen from him and he struck the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had done this, the waters were separated and divided this way and that way and Elisha crossed over. <laughs> See, this is an important portion of scripture because it's a blueprint to us of how to receive a mantle from heaven. It's a blueprint to us of what it looks like to be so hungry for God that nobody can talk you out of your destiny, that nobody can talk you out of your calling. Now you got to see this because Elisha got the attention of God. See, Elisha, because he was unwilling to give up when things got hard. In, in each city when he was discouraged by man he didn't listen to them he was on a mission to receive a mantle from heaven three times he had to deny the people that were trying to tell him to stop but when he got across that river Jordan the prophet said ask whatever you want and he said I want a double portion of your spirit and Elijah said you've asked a hard thing Elisha why was it a hard thing because the only one who could give the mantle is the Lord See, out of our human ability, we can't give anything. But it's God's anointing that rests on us. It's Jesus that lives inside of us. And so the spirit of prophecy came on Elijah. He said, you've asked a hard thing, but nevertheless, if your eyes are on me when I'm taken up, 
You can have what you ask. The Bible says a chariot of fire came between him and Elijah. And Elijah was taken in the whirlwind. And Elisha cried, My father, my father! And the second father, the mantle fell. Listen, if you want a double portion mantle, you got to learn to follow leadership. You got to learn to follow mentors and fathers and mothers. You got to learn how to serve the move of God, the anointing of God. See, before this moment, Elijah was the greatest prophet on the earth and Elisha was just a young man. In fact, you never hear of Elisha doing any miracles, prophesying. His entire identity was that he was known as the man who washed Elijah's hands. See, God will never entrust you with authority over a generation He'll never entrust you with authority and, and influence in your own vision until you learn to serve another man, another woman's vision. See, authority is released through leadership. Prophetic impartation is released through leadership. That's why we're here this week. Because God is going to release leadership skills. But he's also going to release prophetic mantles. See, so you've got to hear this. He said, my father, my father. And the mantle fell. Notice it was the second father that the mantle fell. Because here's the reason why. We cannot idolize man. We can't idolize people. Listen, what it looks like to follow leaders healthy. It, it looks like this. I'm honoring the Lord Jesus that rests on their life. I honor the anointing of God. The miracles of God. The signs and wonders. Because they are a sign that they're a friend of God. And when we honor God inside of leaders, it opens the door for impartation to begin to happen. But how many know the reason why the mantle didn't fall the first time he said, My father! But it was the second time, My father, my father! It's because true leadership will impart the same intimacy they carry into the sons and the daughters of God. And in order to receive the double portion mantle, you need to come into the same intimacy as the fathers with the Father in heaven. See, what happened with Elijah is as he was following his father, he discovered the Father. He went, my father, my father. And God the Father in heaven released the mantle. And he picked it up. And the Bible says he went back to the river and he struck the river. He said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And the rivers parted. See, God wants to impart intimacy to you. 
This is a prophetic conference. What is that about? It's about intimacy with God. It's about an impartation to hear His voice, to see in the Spirit, to encounter His love. It's about a supernatural grace coming on your life that you can speak to the rivers of impossibility and they will part for you. See, there's a generation that's about to rise up. They're going to begin to discover spiritual truths and keys to unlock the heavenly realm over their families, over their workplace, over their universities, over their nations, over their cities. And you got to see this because what is a mantle? The Bible says he picked up a mantle. And it became his. What is a mantle? How many know we got buzzwords in the church? How many know we got popular words in the church? And sometimes we say stuff. And we don't really know what we're saying. I want a mantle. How many know if you tell someone that's not saved? I see a mantle on you. They'll say, get it off. Because they don't understand what it means. Listen, I want to talk to you about what a mantle is for a moment. So that you can understand. Listen, a mantle is a word that is used to describe an outer garment worn by someone. Listen, this, this is what it is. And you got to understand in the Old Testament, they would wear mantles and those mantles would describe to people around them who they are. For instance, if a king walks into the room in the natural realm, how many know very quickly you know who the king is? Why? Because of what they're wearing. Listen, Elijah had a mantle that was made out of camel hair it was, a, it was a mantle like an animal skin. See, in the Old Testament, many times their, their, their clothing or their mantle signified who they were in the natural or in the spirit. Listen, in the New Testament, did you know that there were mantles? How many of you remember the story of blind Bartimaeus? The blind man who lived by the city of Jericho. He heard that Jesus was coming. He began to cry out. Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. How many know that the people around Bartimaeus said, Shh, be quiet. Shut up. He wouldn't stop. Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. And all of a sudden, Jesus, he stopped. He said, who is that? They said, it's Bartimaeus. And the same people that told him to shut up and be quiet. They said, be of good cheer. For the master is calling you. And he goes to Jesus. And Jesus says to him, what do you want from me? And he says, Lord, that I might receive my sight. 
You know what the Bible tells us? It tells us that when Jesus called him, you know what he did? The Bible says that, that he began to walk towards Jesus and he threw off his outer cloak. He threw off his beggar's cloak onto the ground. And he said, I want my sight. See, in the days of Jesus, if you were really disabled, if you were really blind like Bartimaeus, the government would issue you a government-issued mantle that would tell everybody around you that you were really disabled and you were deserving of receiving alms. See, what, what was powerful about this is here's this blind man from birth and here comes Jesus Jesus says what do you want from me he takes this beggar's cloak off throws it on the ground see he was trading in his old identity for a new identity he was going from blind to receiving his sight he went from begging and poor and weak and defeated to stepping into being a son of God. See, this is what God's going to do tonight. Many of you are going to throw off the old cloak. And you're going to step into a new season of breakthrough and power. Now listen. What is a mantle in the New Testament? I'll tell you what it is. Spiritually speaking, after Jesus rose again from the dead, how many know the mantle was not about what you wore anymore? But the mantle represents the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that rests on someone's life. See, the presence of God resting on your life is your spiritual mantle. And God wants to release a double portion mantle that the weight of His glory, the power of His presence, the supernatural unction to prophesy, to move in miracles, to move in healing, that it would come on your life and that you would never be the same. I'll never forget on the 12th night of the fire and glory outpouring that we have been hosting for four years. We just had a thousand nights last week. On night 12, my spiritual father came. His name is Papa Cheon. And he's got a network of churches, about 87,000 churches. He, he's an apostle of apostles and the way that his church was birthed he has 2,000 members at his church in Pasadena, California the way his church was birthed was him and Lou Engel hosted revival for three years and it birthed H-Rock Church. He showed up night 12. Unannounced. I didn't expect him to come. And I saw him and said, wow. And he said, I'm here to release a mantle. He had a thousand dollar jacket on. And publicly took this jacket off and put it on me. And he prophesied, you will see double of what I saw. And God began to bless us. In fact, we already have gone one year longer than they went. 
And God is birthing a movement all over the earth. And people are being raised up because of the grace of God. See, that day there was a spiritual transference that came on my life. But God used a physical sign to release it. And I'm telling you, I see mantles all over this room. Mantles of the Holy Ghost. Mantles of the Holy Spirit. You have to understand. Oh, the Bible tells us in 1 John. 1 John 2.20. 1 John 2.20. It says, as for you, you have an anointing from God. And you know all things. See, God wants to release an anointing on you tonight. See, what, what is a spiritual mantle? It's the anointing of God's spirit resting upon a person. That word anointing in the Greek it means charisma. Charisma speaks of personality. How many know if there's a good speaker or a president that can speak well? The media will say, wow, with what charismatic speech they speak. With what charisma? You know what that word charisma means? It means to smear upon. It means to rub off upon. It means to paint a new picture. It means to clothe with power. And I want to say this. God wants to release this to you. See, you are who you hang around with. See, the personality of God is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. How many of you know that when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, the person of God makes his home inside of you? The person of the Spirit of God lives inside of you. How many know there's a difference between the person and the personality? How many know that if I if if I only know Joshua is a person, but I don't know his personality, then I don't really know Joshua. See, many believers they have the gift of the Holy Spirit, but they have not gotten to know Holy Spirit. See. God wants to release friendship to a generation. And here's the way it works. When you spend time with the Holy Spirit, when you spend time in the Word, God's charisma starts to be released in your life. He starts to rub off on you. What's on Jesus begins to get on you. Whenever you spend time with God, He imparts Himself to you. And you start to develop a mantle. Listen, let me ask you a question. If you're dealing with the fear of man, how many of you know Jesus is fearless? How many know Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah? Who has overcome hell, death, and the grave? And the devil is under his feet. So if you have 
a spirit of fear. And you spend time with God. And his anointing begins to rub off on you. How many know he'll change you? Because if you struggle with fear and you hang out with one who has no fear, his anointing will paint a new picture in your life. His anointing will break the yoke of fear off of you and impart boldness to the place where fear no longer exists. same with sickness. He'll do the same with disease. He'll do the same with lust. He'll do the same with anxiety. He wants to break off every limitation. And he wants to impart his nature. See, Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind. And Elisha received a double portion mantle. Did you know that Elijah was a foreshadow and a picture of Jesus Christ? Elisha was a foreshadow and a picture of a double portion generation. Did you ever think about the fact that just like Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind uh, on the mountain? What happened to Jesus? He was taken up in a cloud on the mountain. And he prophesied to his disciples. Not many days from now. The Holy Spirit and fire is going to come on you. Oh, the mantle of heaven. The last words of Jesus. These were the last words of Jesus. They were wait until you're clothed with power from on high. That you would be my witnesses. To Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. See, Jesus is our Elijah. We are an Elisha generation. And Jesus, listen, listen. Jesus was on a mission to reveal the Father's love. See, the Bible says that everywhere Jesus went, repentance was happening. Not because he was beating people up. See, the Bible says the goodness of God leads to repentance. See, Jesus' disciples, right before Jesus went back to heaven, he said, Where I go, you know. And how many know that one of the disciples named Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And Jesus said this, have I been with you this long and you don't know who I am? He said, I've been doing the work that the Father has sent me to do. This is what Jesus said. When you've seen me, you've seen my Father. See, God is about to release the mantle of sonship to this generation. Where there's an awakening in our hearts and we cry, Abba, Father. See, Elijah and Elisha's story was only prophesying about what was going to be released at the cross. That an entire generation would step into the Elisha anointing. A double portion. Listen, this is why my ministry is called Elisha Revolution. God has called Miranda and I to raise up a double portion generation. 
a generation of revivalists and reformers. Revivalists and reformers. See, that's why we carry what we carry. My wife is a revivalist, but she's also a reformer. She walks the runways and modeling. She's in magazines, photo shoots. She's famous outside the church. Has influence with the world. Sees many people saved, healed, and delivered. See, God is going to raise up a generation like this. Who are revivalists? No and they're reformers. They bring the kingdom of God with power in the darkness. Two years ago, I got commissioned as an ambassador with the UN. So I can actually go to any nation on the planet. And governments can't stop me. I'm not a politician. But I'm a son of God. And because of my prophetic calling, God gave me a status that could get me wherever He wants me to go. See, it's revival and reformation. God wants to touch the church and He wants to touch the world. And He wants to give you unusual breakthrough so that you can do things that no one else can do. Now listen, you got to understand something. If you want a double portion mantle, you need to learn from the journey of Elijah and Elisha. See, the Bible tells us that when it came time to pass, that the mantle would be passed from Elijah to Elisha. It says that Elijah visited three different cities that he established schools of the prophets in. And the Bible tells us that Elisha had to follow Elijah into those places in order to receive the double portion. Here's the reason why. His prophetic journey through each of these cities describes to us a work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And one thing I want to tell you this. Everywhere he went, he was being discouraged. The naysayers, the prophets that didn't like him, they were jealous because he was with Elijah. And they were not. When they went through the cities, they'd say, your master's going to leave you today. And you know what Elijah said? Each city, hey, you should stay here, Elisha. And you got to understand, if he would have stayed, he could have had amazing ministry because he's Elisha's protege. He could have led the school of the prophets. But that wasn't his full calling. His full calling was to be the lead prophet of the nation. See, sometimes your worst enemy is called good. Sometimes good is a distraction to stop you from the best. And that's where you got to get vision to know who you are and where you're going. So no matter what, no one can stop you from getting where you go. Now listen. Geographical, the geographical locations of all of these spots from Gilgal 
to Bethel, Bethla, to Jericho, Jericho, and even to the River Jordan. They were all, they were all downhill. In fact, how many know sometimes before you can move forward, it'll sometimes feel like you're going backwards. In order to get to where you're going, you got to learn to humble yourself. You got to learn to follow the presence of God no matter what. They were already in the high place. But now they're going down to the valley. See, but if you're going to go into your calling, you got to go lower. In order to go higher, you got to walk in humility and you got to walk in servanthood. See, servanthood is the quickest way to promotion. Remember how I told you that my apostle gave me a double portion mantle when revival broke out in San Diego and it's not stopped we're still going I will be back Friday preaching but you got to understand something for four years before I received this mantle for four years before revival broke out I was serving the ministry of Cheon I preached at all the conferences I was the office of the prophet for the church I could have done massive conferences on my own I could have done stuff way bigger than what I was even doing serving with him but I knew that he was my Elijah and the Lord said, serve, serve, so I turned down speaking engagements that in the natural would look better than the ones it is. I still traveled the world and did stuff. But I gave my spiritual father priority when it came to being booked for ministry. Four years later, the fire of God fell in San Diego. He came and he gave me the double portion mantle. And ever since, it's exploded all around the world. We're now preaching in crusades of up to 250,000 people a night. Hundreds of thousands of salvations. We are believing this year for one million salvations in 2020. And we have five major crusades. We'll have preached to almost five million people by the end of the year. When you add all the nights up. See, my spiritual father didn't do that. But you know what happened is the double portion has come on my life. And now I'm in my own destiny. My wife and I are seeing revival all over the earth. And God is releasing acceleration. But you got to see this. Because everywhere that Elisha followed Elijah, there was a prophetic impartation. And even tonight, God wants to release prophetic impartation through this same journey. See, the first place that Elijah went to was a city called Gilgal. He went to Gilgal and Elisha had to go there with him. Listen, before you can step into the double portion mantle, before you can step into the next level on your life, you have to learn the prophetic lesson of Gilgal. You know what Gilgal was? 
Gilgal was the place where God called Joshua to lead the armies of God into the land of promise. And this is what the Lord said to Joshua. Joshua had an encounter with the captain of the Lord of hosts, with Jesus himself in the Old Testament form. And when he saw him, Joshua said, are you for us or against us? You know what the captain of the Lord of hosts said? He said, neither. Here's the reason why. If you want to advance in the anointing, you need to understand God's not for what we want. And he's not for what our enemies want. He's for what he wants. And he does not listen to man. If you want to advance in the kingdom, you have to learn to be like Jesus. What he was in the garden about to be crucified. He said, Lord, if this cup can be taken from me, let it be so. But then he said, not so, Lord. Let your will be done, not mine. See, if we're going to walk out the calling of God on our lives, we got to learn to be radically obedient. See, Gilgal was a place of obedience. In fact, God, then, then God told Joshua, Consecrate yourselves today, for you shall see signs and wonders amongst you tomorrow. Listen, listen to me. Purity is not optional. Purity is a must. You will never be used by God to the level that He wants to use you unless you learn to consecrate your life. And you, unless you allow the Spirit of God to have His way in your heart to remove every hook, to remove every fear, every stronghold. You know what they had to do at Gilgal? They had to be circumcised. And it's a picture of God cutting away the flesh so that you can move into what God has for you in a place of covenant relationship. See, if you want to move in what God has, you got to allow Him to circumcise you. Now, thank God that the New Testament says that the circumcision that God wants to give you is not a circumcision with hands but it's a circumcision of the heart. See, God wants to empower you to overcome pornography, to overcome fear, to overcome sickness, disease. He wants you to overcome addictions. He wants you to overcome everything that will pull you down and destroy your life. See, the second place that they went to was the city of Jericho. And you have to understand that if you're going to step into your calling and you're going to step into a double portion anointing, then you must learn the Jericho lesson, the, the Bethel lesson. You want to know what the Bethel lesson was? It's a place of open heavens. It's a place where Jacob, in Genesis 28, had an encounter with God. See, Jacob, when he had that encounter, he did not know who God was. See, he was living vicariously through his father and his grandfather's faith. 
But he had not yet had an encounter of his own. In fact, the Bible says in Genesis 27 that he dressed himself up like his brother. He dressed himself up like his brother that he was not. So he could steal his brother's inheritance. See, he was in an identity crisis. He didn't believe that who he was was good enough to be blessed by God. See, he didn't believe that his father, Isaac, would release a blessing to him unless he was his older brother Esau. See, if you want to step into the double portion, you got to overcome competition. You got to overcome jealousy. You got to learn to be comfortable with who you are and not think not think that the process on someone else's side is better than yours. You know what Jacob did? His mother, Rebecca, dressed him up like his brother and he tricked his father into laying hands on him and releasing the blessing of God. And the Bible says that Isaac was uh, feeling the arms of, of, of Jacob. See, because Esau was a hairy man. So what they did is they stripped a goat. That was one funny looking goat after that. And they put the skin on. When Isaac felt the skin, he said, you feel like Esau but you sound like Jacob no 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 it's Esau they laid hands on him he released the blessing and then Jacob received the double portion but here's the problem Esau came home and now he wants to kill Jacob and you know what happens Jacob runs from Esau and he comes to the Genesis 28 encounter of Bethel see his whole life he was living vicariously through his father and his grandfather many people come to church and they only know God through their friends they only know God through their parents maybe just through their, their, their pastor and they're always trying to be like someone that they're not hoping to get a blessing from their father but here's what happens Jacob lays his head in a certain place the heavens open over his life and the angels of God begin to ascend and descend from the throne of God see when you've walked through the anointing of Gilgal and you've consecrated your life to God he'll remove all the insecurities all the competition all the jealousies and you'll stop living your life vicariously through other people's faith and you'll move to Jacob's encounter which is, which is Bethel and God himself will supernaturally reveal himself see this is what God wants to do he wants to awaken an entire generation by revealing the father's love to them that you would be secure in your own skin because God created you to be you he didn't create you to be someone else see if you want a double portion mantle you got to learn this and here's the deal you will never step into the fullness of your calling without an open heaven without a revelation of the Holy Ghost without a revelation of the Father's love for you see Jacob 
went from not knowing God to all of a sudden God spoke to him about his destiny. See, this place was actually named Luz. And Jacob renamed it to Bethel. You know what Bethel means? This is none other than the house of God. God dwells in this place. See, God wants to unlock this revelation to a generation that we would, that we would know that it's not religion that we're following, but it's the presence of God. Listen, from that place, they went to Jericho. Listen, I'm almost done. But I have to lay this out for you so that you can rewatch this and you can learn how to receive the impartation. See, you're going to receive the impartation tonight. But what I'm telling you will accelerate that anointing so that you can move in to an accelerated growth in God. See, this is a prophetic conference. And this is a prophetic message. Listen, Elisha followed him through Gilgal and Bethel. But then he went to Jericho. Did you know that Jericho was the place where Joshua learned how to worship and warfare? Out of obedience to God, they marched around the city seven times and they blew the horns. And when they did, the walls of Jericho fell. See, you'll never get into your calling in the fullness of your destiny if you don't learn how to worship God with all your heart if you don't know how to shout if you don't know how to decree if you don't know how to worship in spirit and in truth you'll never see the enemy's walls fall and you'll never take cities and regions but there's a generation who are going to carry the passion of Jesus they're going to carry the fire of God they're going to carry a Jericho anointing to go into the hardest cities and to shout the walls down with their intimacy with God. I've been to over 60 nations preaching the gospel. I've gone to some of the hardest regions in the world. Last year I was in Malawi, Africa. It's the number one impoverished nation on the planet. Filled with witch doctors and sorcerers. I'll never forget. On night three, of our crusade 70,000 people were in this place and the Lord told me to confront the witch doctors hundreds of witch doctors were in this place they had been killing animals making blood sacrifice and the Lord told me to get up and tell them that the blood of the lamb is a greater sacrifice than any of their sacrifices and that the higher sacrifice cancels out the lower sacrifice and he told me to declare that healing and deliverance was going to happen that night that night with 70,000 people 30,000 people gave their life to Jesus around 40,000 people waved their hands testifying 
that God had removed an evil spirit from them. They saw the demon leave. They felt the demon leave. And you know what I did? I had them shout. See, the Bible says, shout out to God with a voice of triumph. And when they shouted, it broke the witchcraft. It shattered the witchcraft. That night, so many paralyzed got healed. We couldn't, care. We couldn't count them all. So many blind saw. We couldn't count them all. So many deaf heard. We couldn't count them all. Over half the crowd received a miracle. See, but we had to learn how to exalt the Lamb and His blood above the devil and His lower sacrifice. We have to learn to shout. That's why when we shout, power is released. Devils are rebuked. Darkness flees. But then there's the final journey, which is the river of God. How many know we have to cross over? And here's what happened. Elijah. Hold this. This is his. But not yet. Elijah, take the mantle. And he struck it. And the river parts. See, if you're going to walk into your destiny, come here. No, you stand right here. No, no, walk with me. If you're going to walk in, watch. This, this is what has to happen. You have to move from the natural to the supernatural. And here's what happens. Elijah. Boom! And they walk through. They walk through the river. They walk through. And Elijah says to Elisha, What do you want from me? What did Elisha say? Double portion of your anointing. Now I want to say something. Elijah asked Elisha what he wanted from him. And you know how quickly he answered? Listen, I believe Elijah had thought about this moment for a long time. He already prepared the ground of his heart to receive a double portion. See, I believe just like a woman that's dating a man, a woman that's dating a man, and she knows that he's about to pop the question of marriage. How many know she prepares herself? She, she looks in the mirror. Oh, when he asks me, I'm going to go, yes. No, 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 I'm going to go, of course, baby. Or, or maybe she says, when he asks me, I'm gonna go. Ah! How many know that's what women do? And just like a bride to be meditates on that wedding day, we need to be fixed on Jesus. We need to be fixed on the double portion. And we have to move from the natural to the supernatural. See, a lot of the church in the world, they only live in half the breakthrough. 
because they reject the river of God they reject the presence of God they reject the anointing of God the miracles of God and you know what they do they're like the 50 that stood across way over here and they watched Elijah and Elisha cross over but they did not receive anything from God see there's a whole generation that's about to receive a double portion mantle but you gotta be hungry you gotta be determined you gotta be you gotta be willing to be unusually passionate for Jesus you have to be willing to not care what religious people think Elijah told the religious guys no no I will not listen to you I will not stop following Jesus I will not stop until I get the double portion. Hallelujah! 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 Yay. Come here. Lava. Put. Come here. Come here. I need a catcher. Father, I thank you. The Lord, you're releasing a double portion mantle of the evangelist and the prophet over Joshua tonight. Here, pick him back up. Pick him back up. Get him back up. And Lord, I thank you that what you put on my life to win souls, to move in power, to move in signs and wonders, You're Elijah, being Jesus, wants to give you a double portion tonight. If you want that mantle, come out of your seats and come to the front. Come out of your seats. We're crossing over in the history of the Burmese church. If you want to stay on the other side of the Jordan, go ahead. I'm not going to do it. Tonight, God is drawing a line in the sand. And he's saying to you tonight, it's all or nothing. I'm going to give people one more chance. Don't be like the 50 prophets who were religious and stood afar. Come on, I'm giving some of you an opportunity right now. You know what? Holy Spirit just said something to me. Some people don't understand the translation. If that's someone that you're here with, bring them to the front. Bring them to the front. Listen, one thing I tell people is if you don't want your portion, I'll take it. San Diego will take it. But you know what? I know you're hungry. Come on, I want you to put your hands up. Jesus. <laughs> Come on.
Come on, every one of you, put your hands. Except for you. <laughs> you put one foot up. <laughs> I'm joking. But we need the sound. Don't worry, it's coming on you. Listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to lift up four shouts. Each time we shout, there's going to be an anointing that falls. And what we're going to do is we're going to release the anointing of Gilgal, Jericho, Bethel, and the double portion of the river of the Holy Spirit. So I want you just to start to close your eyes all around this place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make prophetic decrees. I'm going to pray. And then when I'm done praying, I want you to lift up a shout. See, I'm going to prophesy. Here's the deal. True prophets prophesy. A true prophetic generation prophesies. Listen, the spirit of prophecy is going to come on you. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to declare each blessing. And when I'm done, I want you to shout with your might. And the fire is going to fall. So here's the first blessing. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we release the anointing of Gilgal. Lord, release a consecration of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we release right now the fire of God that releases purity, that releases righteousness, a fire that burns away every hook every stronghold every addiction we release breakthrough we release signs and wonders miracles we release obedience to the Holy Spirit we release fire and everybody shout Come on, put your hands up. Father, I thank you right now for that anointing like Jacob. That open heaven anointing of sonship where we begin to hear the Father's voice. We begin to see in the Spirit. We begin to hear in the Spirit. And we discover who we are and whose we are. Father, I thank you that the heavens are open for every person tonight. That the angels of God will begin to ascend and descend from the throne of heaven. Come on, we're going to shout for breakthrough. One, two, three, shout! the third 
one. The anointing. Like Joshua carried. At Jericho. An anointing of worship and warfare to bring spiritual walls down. To see the walls of the enemy destroyed. To take back cities in Jesus' name. To take nations for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Here we go. One. Two, three, shout! Oh! The Bethel anointing. The Jericho anointing. But now we're going to cross over to the other side. We're going to strike the ground. But listen, right here, right now, is the moment where we make a new commitment to follow Jesus with all our hearts with all our passion that we will never allow anybody to stop us from going after the Holy Ghost from going after Jesus from going after the Father Listen, there's an impartation of the river of God. The anointing of glory. Oh, as we cross this river, the mantle of the double portion is going to fall. So I'm going to pray that God would release this supernatural anointing to cross over from the natural to the supernatural. So put your hands up. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the cross of Christ. For what he did at Calvary. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you paid the price that we could receive the promise of the Father. Listen, what was the promise of the Father? It was to be clothed with power from on high. He's going to clothe you with fire tonight. He's going to clothe you with fire when you shout. That double portion mantle is going to come on you when you shout. One, two, three, shout! Receive, 
receive. I hear the Lord saying, pick up the double portion now. Come on, prophetically, pick it up. Come on, prophetically, pick up the new mantle. And prophetically, we're going to strike the ground. And we're going to say, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Come on, as a prophetic act. We're going to strike the ground. Here we go. One, two, three. Strike. ဒီအမ်စီအတင်းတော်ရဲ့တရားခေါ်ချက်များပဲဖြစ်ပါတယ်မိတ်ဆွေကုကြီးရှုနေတာဒီယူအမ်စီအတင်းတော်ရဲ